So in this video, I'm going to take you through a little bit as far as how to get started and continue working in graphic scale. A lot of the things that you're going to see here are also applicable to other pixel based software programs as well. So overall, some things to pay attention to, though, include things like layers, the color palette, but also creating the project and working between the preview window and the loop a window so that you can see what you're working with. Now, under File and New, I just want to draw your attention here, and it might be a little hard to see, but there is an element of not only the width and height in pixels, but also the color choices as well. We want to keep our palette small for starting out here, so we're not going to go larger than 8-bit colors. The reason being is this is where you can see it into a lot more as far as shading, uh, light source, etc. So right now we're not going to worry too much about that. but Another thing to point out is whenever you're also working, you can also set a preset if you prefer. So to come back into the file I'm currently working on, this kind of relates to the textbook here. I've gone through already and built the majority of our character here as far as working with the different colors, but also you can see in the preview window, this is where the preview is most important. Now also too, Whenever you're working, you're going to probably want to zoom in, but the nice thing about this preview window is it shows you the actual size. When you're working in pixel art or you're working as far as sprite design, sometimes you can get a little lost as far as when you're zooming in and you're thinking something needs to look super detailed. And then when you zoom out to the actual size, it may not actually be showing up there. So with this in mind here, there are some options here whenever you're working as far as the view where you can actually go in and choose different types of zooms under the view drop down menu. And you see here now I can kind of scroll in a little bit further, get that detail and be able to work pixel by pixel if I so choose. Now, another thing to point out to you is I did not build this pixel by pixel. I utilized the layers panel where I was able to edit, cut, and duplicate different pieces of the body onto different layers. So when you're working with layers, the beauty of this is you can separate out and have more control over each of the individual elements of your object. Now, anytime that you want to make a new layer, you're going to click on this drop down arrow and add. Like most programs, you're going to have layers and you're going to need to change the name of the layer. So we'll go ahead and add a new name here and tell it OK. Now, if you want to reposition your layer, though, you can tell it's the chosen one because of the blue as far as it being selected and highlighted. But then if you'd like to rearrange it in the stack, you have this up and down arrow on the left hand side here for your layers panel. So now I can go ahead and rearrange as far as the layer goes. So we're going to be drawing some hair and ears, and since that's the details to the face and I want to keep the overall head separate, I can go ahead here and we'll zoom in so that you can see this a little better. There we go. So you can see now that I have a face features right above the head outline. Now, let's say though that I want to make sure that I'm not interacting with any of the other layers here. I can come in now on this layer and begin to draw as far as what other elements I'd like to add. Now, if I don't want to see something or interact with something, I have a couple of options as far as these sub buttons on the layers panel here. First off, the little smiley face indicates whether or not you can actually see the layer itself. This is a great option that if you want to, and you can actually see here, um, I'm going to go to the head outline, turn it on and off. Just hiding the layer visibility in general can help as far as making sure you're not accidentally drawing on it. Right next to it, though, you see the letter L for lock. Now, by default, if you just hit it once, the L will become bold and it locks. And you can see when I zoom out here, at least in graphic scale, it tells you the layer cannot be edited because it's locked. This is great if you need to keep the layer active, but you need to have a reference. Now there's a second lock option as well, where you're locking the transparent pixels of the layer. So you might still be able to come in and you might want to maybe do some work on the head outline, but anything outside of that has already been drawn there, you won't be able to work with. 
Lastly, you click it one more time, you're going to unlock the layer. And now you could edit it like a standard layer if you so chose to. Really the big one we're going to work with though is the bolded, bolded L for lock. So let's come back up to face features. I've now set it up whereby I've locked this, the face so that I'm not accidentally drawing on it or anything like that. Um, and that's one of the things with layers too. You really want to pay attention to what you're working with. Now let's talk a little bit about the color palette panel. Because we're locked in as far as the number of colors we're allowed as far as the design goes, you can work with choosing specific colors here and setting your color palette up. Notice when you hover, you get the RGB values, which again, go back to setting up a color palette. You can see here that when I've used that color, it's associated with certain elements here, but now let's talk about actually changing like the hue saturation and levels. This is where things get a little bit tricky with pixel design. Notice when I change as far as the luminosity and make the color shade darker or lighter, any reference to a pixel that has that specific color from the color palette on it is going to change. This again goes back to the whole 8-bit, 16-bit, etc. as far as how many colors in the color palette we are allowing. If I want to do more sh shading and creating shadows and highlights and stuff like that, I am going to either A, have a color gradient, or B, I'm going to have to make a file that allows for a larger color palette scale. So let's go ahead here on the face features. I'm going to use my pixel pencil tool and I'm going to use this brown that I made. I actually use this for the shoes as well. And we're going to draw some hair in here. Nothing too in depth here, just to show you as far as layer work, things like that. Again, Notice that I can still see through, but if I grab my paint bucket tool, you see how I'm able to fill in those pixels there. Now again, I'm going to come back in. I'm going to grab my pencil tool. We're going to do a little bit of editing and cleaning up here. And now I'm going to go ahead and add on the ear as far as the design goes. Oh, get that out of the way. making sure I line up correctly. There we go. And then I'll switch over and just click to add those in. And there we go. So there you can kind of see as far as the workflow. Again, I was on face features. So now that is a layer in front of the face outline. And you can see now the overall design, but also too, if you look at my preview window, you can actually see the overall end result here as far as my little pixel character is concerned. So there is a lot of back and forth as far as referencing, but I hope as far as just kind of taking you through this video, this helps as far as giving you a better idea as far as the workflow goes. Again, while I'm demonstrating this in graphic scale, this doesn't mean that you can't do this in other software programs. Now what I'm going to do here just to show you, like you can go one step further here. So I'm coming in. What I did was I rotated my foreground and background color. And maybe I want to add some sleeves onto my character here. Now I'm paying attention that I do want the arm divides, but also too, instead of maybe having the character wear a tank top, I want to going to line this up here and you see now how I can make edits based on the layers that I'm working on. So now instead of a tank top, our character is showing that they have a little t-shirt on and you can go from here. Again, start out with the solids and don't worry about the shading. That will come later.